Yeah, record. We'll edit this all up. How's everybody doing today? Huh? You guys ready to talk about some yeah. interesting Catholic news? Me and Michael are definitely ready to talk yeah. about some interesting Catholic news. What's our topic this week, Michael? Oh, so the Synod. Tell us a little bit about the Synod, James. Oh, I thought you were supposed to do the research. Uh, I well. guess I'll wing it a little bit. <laughs> I'm kidding, everybody. So what we could do here on Catholicism for the modern world is we could speculate about what the documents are going to be for the Synod. We could freak out about what the Pope's position might be at the Synod. We do a lot of the stuff that's normal for a lot of news coverage in the Catholic world. But we hear, we don't think that's necessarily productive. It doesn't help your faith life, and it doesn't mean anything, because we don't know what the Synod is going to do until the Synod's done, whatever it is it's going to do. So we thought it'd be productive instead to have a brief discussion about what Synods are, and then branch off from that discussion into, a, into kind of a broader meditation on what they can mean for the Church. Now, I'll provide a little bit of historical background to get us started here. So a synod would be called to have a discussion over uh, various different issues. So there were synods in Carthage, for example, and synods in Hippo, which helped set the issue of what would and would not be considered a part of the biblical canon. The goal of a synod is to come together and have interesting conversations for a fairly long period of time and then form a consensus amongst a group of bishops about what is and isn't true on this particular issue. This should not be confused with a church council. A church council makes infallible statements and is usually all of the church called together. Now, mm -hmm. to make something clear, all councils are kind of implicitly synods insofar as a synod is a gathering of bishops. And on paper, you could use the term council and synod interchangeably because, again, both are gatherings of bishops. But what differentiates a synod and a council for the purposes of our distinction here is whether or not it makes what could be called infallible statements or dogmatic statements. Synods do not possess the ability to make such statements. They can't make dogmatic or infallible statements on the faith. They can offer the opinion and the consensus of the bishops as we have it now. No more, no less. Yeah. That's worth remembering when we go into this. Why are people freaking out about this? Why is there so much news about it? It's the top of the Catholic news right now. The Synod on Synodality. It's a really confusing name there. A synod about synodality. Yeah, so, so any, any takes there? To start with the name, the reason it's called the Synod on Synodality is because the Pope, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, is under the impression that the church needs to do a better job of listening to the local public, that we need to bring subsidiarity into greater focus within the church by listening to what the general churchmen in the pews have to say. And then by listening to what the priests say about what the people want to have to say. And then the Pope reflecting on what the bishops want to say. So the Synod on Synodality is meant to not only aid in discussing various doctrinal matters, but is also meant to aid in trying to make the church more centered on listening to the opinions and experiences of the general public, rather than just being focused purely on the theological opinions of whoever is in charge right now. So that's the name covered. As for why people are freaking out about the Synod, First reason is a lot of people don't know what a synod is. They haven't heard this word before. They don't know what it is. They haven't re researched it. And so implicitly, they are afraid of things they don't understand. Two, they suspect that the synod is going to be used to slip in some kind of a change in Catholic doctrine. This generally comes from a distrust of Pope Francis and his broader agenda and a belief that he's secretly attempting to change church doctrine in some way or another. People basically take the fear they have of Pope Francis's administration as a whole and then turn that into a thing that everything he does is dangerous. The third and most important reason is that Catholic news agencies need to be able to keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> greater issue right there. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I, I just want to clarify. I'm yeah. not throwing shade. I'm not throwing shade at Catholic news agencies. You need to keep the lights on. And these people are in the business of selling Catholic news. So they need to find stuff to talk about. And this is a great thing to talk about on a long term. Yeah. What were you going to so ask was my, question? Uh, that was my next question right there. You asked it yourself and answered it really. Like, is this mm -hmm. something important? Is this something that will be lasting? Are there implications of this, effects of this that we will be seeing in the future? We can't know until they've come. Nobody knows what any document or any group of people are going to do in the church until they've done it. The story isn't over until it's over. 
So until the Synod ends and until we see whatever documents it produces, and really, if we're being honest, until we go 250 years down the line and see if anyone's using these documents to influence anything they say, we can't know what effect it's going to have on the church. And speculating is a very, very bad idea. So we can always trust in the Holy Spirit. That's always our um, backup plan, the Holy Spirit. Plan A and our backup plan combined together. So the church <laughs> isn't going anywhere, and we aren't going anywhere either. This first show is off to a very good start, and we'll move on to the next segment. God bless everyone.